Hi guys, welcome to the show. As you can see, you know where I am. <laughs> no wristwatch check required today. Let's get on with the show. I can't deny that the sight of Bruno Leschi's Capo Lavoro, the Duomo appearing on the horizon, almost brought tears to my eyes. Florence needs no introduction. Its influence and cultural importance is so great that UNESCO declared the entire historic city centre a World Heritage Site. In fact, just to give you an idea of how significant it is, according to statistics produced by UNESCO, 60% of the world's most important artworks are located in Italy, and approximately half of these are in Florence. Here we are, here we are. Home sweet home. Casa Dolce Gaza. <laughs> Immediately you walk in and what do you see? The church of San Lorenzo. It's so strange because we used to hang out on the steps on the other side, so I've never seen this part of the church. Then we step into this area and look, oh my God. I'm canceling my ticket. I'm not coming back. I'm sorry guys, there's no more urban gentry. There's no more, I'm staying here. Bye. <laughs> You're supposed to sit here and watch that. <clears throat> but I don't know why you wasted time watching that rubbish. Well, unless you're watching this channel, obviously me and Hugo. But why would you watch that when you can look at this? This is the Medici and Suite. Obviously, obviously. All right, let's have a, let's go in. The, the, the door's a little rickety and also it's very, very short. So, but have a look at this. Oh my God, look at the fresco. Imagine you wake up every morning, you look at that with a chandelier and everything. But that's not the only thing. I have my own personal ensuite balcone. This little balcone we And look, have a little espresso, and cornetto, you know, every morning, church bells. And inside, I believe they have a Michelangelo, artworks by various artists, and then they do every hour. So that's the, the church bells all the way up there. No visit is complete without a look at at least one of the many art galleries. Top of the list for me is the iconic Uffizi that houses some of the world's most famous works by Botticelli, Caravaggio, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Tiziano, and countless others. To me, revisiting this place was profoundly moving and inspiring. My connection to this magical city runs very deep. While my own family are mainly from Rome, I lived here for several years to study just over 20 years ago, and it's where I met the love of my life my soulmate and the person I would eventually marry. So you can begin to understand why this inimitable place is even more special. Not just for Dante, Machiavelli, the Medicis, the birthplace of the Renaissance and so much more. Obviously I brought my own Panerai after converting to the Paneristi. I am now a full-blown Panerista. Because we're in Firenze, the birthplace of Panerai, I have been loaned very generously, this Panerai Due. I just want to say a massive shout out and thanks to Shreve, Crump and Lo who have loaned this in. Amazingly generous, just to let me borrow a watch, fly <laughs> across the world. I'm honored because they are actually the oldest uh, authorized dealer for many, many brands, but they're the oldest watch dealers in the United States. I'm gonna go to Boston, I'm gonna visit their store. They have an incredible store there and hopefully get to know them a bit more. Guys, have a look at that website and nominate which brands, everything you can imagine. Brands I'd never even thought, yes, even Richard Mille, uh, but brands, <laughs> 
brands I even never thought that I'd have access to. So have a look at their website. Let me know in the comments which uh, you'd like me to cover. Um, so thank you to them. We'll return to this very soon. But oh my God, it's gorgeous. Look at that blue. <gasps> the Squale Azzurro. The 1521. We got a new watch never seen on the channel before, Vertex. This is a modern reinterpretation of their World War II. They were one of the Dirty Dozen. They're the only brand of the Dirty Dozen that is still owned by the same family that founded it, which is quite incredible. So stay tuned for that. I'm very, very excited about this. The Laurier, the Safari. I've got an interview tomorrow. Fingers crossed, tocca palle for my Italian. <laughs> Not, not the most refined way of uh, expression, but for my Italian gentry out there, you'll know what I mean. I got a, an interview with one of Italy's biggest watch collectors tomorrow, so I'm very, very excited. I didn't know what to wear, because what, what do you wear when you're interviewing the guy with the, the biggest, actually it's the biggest watch collection in the world. This is what you wear. You wear a watch that you co-designed with a brand close to your heart. This is actually the strap it came on. So, which is a uh, Riscani Watch Club, the Melange. It's something that's very good in hot weather because it's breathable as well. So there was a lot of reasons. I think this pairing is just perfect. You know, it complements the green. Anyway, I've talked about this before. Uh, the Mission Impossible Casio, never leave home without it. The Tudor Sub, uh, this is actually also on a Riscani Watch Club. I've just realized I've got two. Last, but by no means least, the Pepsi. My go-to travel watch. As I previously reviewed the Panerai Luminor 2, I will skip the typical specs, details on the automatic P900 caliper movement, etc, and get right to the nitty gritty and main point of discussion. Why it was made in the first place, and why it has such a low water resistance of 30 meters. I was not a Panarista at the time, so my understanding of the brand lacked vital context. And while Panerai is undoubtedly a dive watch maker, the Due was never actually intended as one, but in fact a dress watch only. The Luminor Due's case is about 40% slimmer than the original Luminor. That's quite significant, that's almost half. And the height is approximately 10.8mm, slim enough to slip under the cuff of any dress shirt. There has never been a Panerai smaller than this 38mm diameter watch. And many confuse this as being intended for ladies only when in fact it was designed as unisex. During my travels before I got to Florence, I showed the Due to a very experienced watchmaker friend of mine who has designed, produced and overseen the construction of many watches. He was able to confirm that the case, sapphire glass, case gaskets, case back, the iconic and instantly identifiable crown guard and lock were all made as thin or diminutive as possible to bring this overall height down thus lowering the overall water resistance as a result deliberately. So at the start of 2020, I had finished my work in Philadelphia and I was planning to come to Italy. Part of the plan was that I would review watches traveling around uh, all the places I grew up, uh, places like here where I studied, places my family are from, and explore new places as well while reviewing watches. I mean, what is better than that? Unfortunately, lockdowns and all of that happened. So here we are, you know, we've waited quite a while. I am very, quite emotional about being here. Inexplicable, the, the, the range of emotions, it's, it's beyond nostalgia. It's just because even the smell, you know, Florence has a very particular smell. And of course, we have been eating very, very <laughs> too well. The word due means two in Italian, not because it was meant to replace previous luminors, but as it was intended as a second piece to your main Panerai or collection. For example, my late 90s luminor at 40 millimeters is monstrously thick, not only to house its now dated overly tall Valju 7750 automatic based caliber, but also for the necessary waterproofing that brings it 
to a 300 meter rating. Now, if you missed my deep dive on the history and a review of this watch, along with an unboxing, do have a look back. I'll provide the link somewhere on screen now. Now, I wear my Panerai as a daily beater to work out, shower, sleep, and I unapologetically treat it as the masculine oversized military tool it was always supposed to be. The Due, however, is a dress watch and should be perceived as such, not a diver. With its rich sunburst profondo blue dial, gilt hands, modest scale, it's merely a refined and delicate dressy sibling to the matte dial austerity of my current macho big boy luminal. The fact that the Due comes on a snazzy, super luxurious alligator leather in a glossy royal blue finish only underlines its more formal intention, along with having less text on the sandwich dial too. These watches together is a duo that very much is a do-it-all collection in itself. One is for rescuing stranded people in a collapsed tunnel under the Hudson River, and the other for vodka martinis after to celebrate a mission complete. Okay, so behind me is Ponte Vecchio, the iconic bridge with all the little stores. In fact, they have watch stores on there as well. It's mainly jewelry, maybe not the best deals, but it is beautiful, obviously, so definitely worth a visit. Here we go. Okay. Okay, we are at Giardino di Boboli. Behind me, I'll just pan there. You can see Palazzo Pitti there. Amazing collections inside, but actually, this garden here is a very special place for me. I used to come here all the time. It's funny, I don't remember any tourists when I used to, when I studied in Florence, but uh, obviously we're in a different age now. But you know what, it's stunning all the same. There's a view of the Duomo. And I keep struggling to, to, to speak about Florence because I don't want to cry. <laughs> Perhaps the main thing I adore about my Panerai, aside from the design and the history, is just how instantly legible it is. And sounds maybe a tad simplistic, but checking the time with tired, squinting eyes when I randomly wake up in the middle of the night is easy as pie, let alone in a diving situation. The same can be said about the Due, something most dress watches, 99 times out of 100, sorely lack, which, in my opinion, both conceptually and in everyday practicality, rarely works. Not to mention being a perfect example of being worthy of the urban gentry trademarked phrase, a strap monster. Okay, so we just went to the Panerai store. I got some goodies. There we go. And there's the Panerai store. This is actually the place of the original. But it's a bit, it's a bit bigger now. There used to be a jewelry shop here. I bought the engagement rings for my wife 20 years ago here. So it's very special. And it just happens to be next to the the new Panerai store, but it's amazing. There's a little museum inside. I could not share it, but uh, I'll try and um, get permission uh, at HQ and maybe we can come back. But it's very, very busy, as you can see. And of course, it's right next to the Duomo, but there is a clock inside the Duomo that uh, they pay to have restored, the beautiful Renaissance clock. I'll put, I'll put an image here. Earlier this year, Panerai released the new Radio Mir 40, 40 meaning 40 in Italian, which obviously refers to its new smaller diameter. With its undeniably elegant Art Deco looks, archetypal cushion case with wired lugs, and probably the most famous sandwich dial of all time, it's absolutely classic and compelling. The Luminor is a little bit more steampunk looking, with its crown guard slash lock system that really does it for me. So while in the flagship store, I tried on the newer updated version of my current Luminor, the Luminor 40 that came out a few years ago. With its easy snap to change straps, much thinner profile, thanks to the newer impressive three-day power reserve P9010 caliber automatic created in group by Panerai and Richemont, along with the sandwich dial that is sadly missing on mine, and a sexy dash of baby blue on the sub seconds hand, it just might be my next luxury watch. However, its 8K price tag will mean some saving up is needed. And with Shreve, Crump and Low also selling used, I might just wait and see what turns up there. 
With them also being the most reputable AD for Panerai in the United States, that is definitely something I would like to travel to Boston in person to purchase if I decide to pull the trigger. But they gave me a lovely book with the history of Panerai in Italian, no less. And in the Italian passport colors, there's the sound of somebody's washing machine. This is so Italian. <laughs> Um, this is a bit like my old Italian passport with these colours and then you put your information in here, they stamp it. Now you're, I'm an official panelista and I can use this in any store, any Panerai store all over the world. Ho messo inglese italiano perché, you know. They have a private museum upstairs with the originals from World War II, even um, older stuff as well, clocks, all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna reach out to Panerai and see if I can do a visit of the store, come back to it's a good ex it's a good uh, excuse to come back, you know. Panerista, out. For those who loathe Panerai, they will always say this watch is too big for me. Ironically, the die-hard Paneristi will say it's too small to be a real Panerai. The skinny divers of the infamous Decima Fotilia Mas, who were among the first to wear these in combat, wore the original gargantuan size of 47 millimeters. But like most things on social media, with all the toxic, insecure, man-baby keyboard warriors, you simply cannot please all the people, all the time. Like I've always said, you gotta wear what pleases you, and grow a thick skin. And just say, I don't care what others think. Non mi interessa cosa pensano gli altri. Uh, gear check. It's become something of a gentry tradition every time I do a travel video. Got some new additions, some classics, like you know the Carl Friedrich Weekend, you know the backpack. I have added, to complement this style, this Hugo Boss crossbody bag, I think they call it. I'm sure a lot of you will say it's a purse, a man purse, I don't care. It's got Hugo, it's, they didn't put Hugo Boss, they just put Hugo, so I, <laughs> it had to be done, right? It's nice, I just like the style of it. I have to be honest, the, the quality of the leather is nothing compared to the Italian vacchetta leather that, it's actually in the, uh, the carry-on here as well, which we'll talk about in a moment but that Carl Friedrich use, it's, it's nowhere near, even the zippers, but anyway, it has the same look. What else? There's a gimbal. I have been recording in a factory, uh, so we wanted to do things a little bit more professional. I can't swear on my channel, but it's rubbish, okay? <laughs> Should we just say that? Guys, if you have any recommendations of a good affordable gimbal system, it says, sounds like a weird word, gimbal. Under $500, preferably um, $500 to $1,000. If you have any suggestions, please do add in the comments. What else, what else? Guys, you know the, uh, the carry-on here. This is the carry-on from uh, Carl Friedrich. I wanna say a few things that I haven't said in the previous videos. These wheels, these Hinomoto Japanese 360 wheels, when you're in an old city like Florence, paving stones all like this, they rarely take a beating, and this thing has stood the test of Renaissance city very very well so i highly recommend it oh and i noticed something else about the the carry-on case it was in the white lotus which was not a bad show i love michael uh, imperioli obviously from the sopranos fame and all that and it was also in succession i haven't seen that yet guys is it any good what is interesting about those two shows it's about you know wealthy people what i love about their bags or the car in general you get that kind of luxurious high quality look it looks expensive, it looks quality, and they are. Kind of classic look, which is something I always love about Carl Friedrich. It hasn't got that tacky branding all over it. We've got this polycarbonate case, the aluminium zipperless, uh, zipperless, that's another weird word, Z zipperless, without a zip, basically, system there, which is really great, the, the locks. Oh, we've covered the, um, the, uh, the USB, you can put a battery in it. So just great, just all round fantastic. What else? And we got a new 11 millimeter wide lens. You'll notice some of the shots. It's fantastic for capturing buildings and architecture, landscapes, that kind of stuff. For example, if I had this lens on that camera, you'd probably see half the room and a little bit of the fresco as well. Fairly affordable, I, I think it was under 500 bucks. By Sony, pretty much all my cameras are Sony. I'm still using the A400 just really like sturdy cameras. I have three of these now. My only critique is the batteries don't last that long, but I highly recommend if you use this camera, buy a whole bunch. There's always a balance between quality, functionality, style in the case of 
luggage and clothes, sometimes heritage, you know, certain brands have heritage, a story that's important. So I always look out for these kind of things. So the gimbal fails pretty much on every single one of those boxes. So you're not going in a store. I'm sorry, gimbal. I'm talking to a gimbal. Well, actually I was swearing at it the other day. So uh, there we go. Carl Friedrich, if you're listening, please make one of these. Make a camera case or a crossbody bag. I'll be the first person to buy it. An extra gear check item I forgot to mention is a new generation of Bellstaff wax jacket. Any fashionista worth their salt will tell you that Bellstaff is famous for their Trailmaster racing jackets. A classic wind and water repellent lightweight wax jacket that celebrates its 75th anniversary this year in 2023. In recent years, it saw something of a comeback, being the choice of Jack Bauer in 24, Live Another Day. For me, however, I wanted something more modern in style, but still military inspired. The Phoenix jacket is a great alternative, just as extremely well made, versatile, easy to layer up or down, depending on temperature variations and conditions, with a more overall casual look with its printed pattern. It's also very practical with its zipped chest pockets for securing items in cities where pickpockets are about. While not the cheapest out there, it certainly is worth every penny. Day four, five, six, I, I can't even remember uh, <laughs> to be honest, but we just went to a fantastic bar at the hotel, I think Palazzo Godagni on the um, Santa Spirito, that was it, which back in the day, about 20 years ago, was just local market. Now it's all trendy bars, all kinds of things. Uh, we're about to take a shortcut through Giardino di Boboli again to get to Piazza Michelangelo, which has a beautiful panoramic view of the city. I'm still wearing my Panerai, by the way. I'm still wearing the Panerai. I can't help it. Let's keep walking. We've got a lot to cover. <laughs> So in terms of food, we mainly stuck to old favorite haunts. Amazingly, Trattoria Zaza was still there, a place we used to frequent all the time. And they have all the traditional Florentine classics you could ever wish for, bistecca and so on. Just make sure you book well in advance because the queues can go around the entire block. It's also a stone's throw from San Lorenzo and I highly recommend it. As is the famous Mercato Centrale, which is great for all types of fast and easy snacking. 20 years ago, I did my daily food shop there, but now it's become a hub of trendy restaurants in a very hectic new food hall. It also happens to be near my old school, which was a blast down memory lane to pass by. After shooting a ton of content for future episodes, we then got on a train to Milan to catch up with old friends for the final leg of our little adventure. Okay, we are in Milan and this station is absolutely incredible. This is uh, Albergo Senato on Via Senato, very, very nice place, it's brand new. And they've given us the penthouse because the, as you can see from the beams, there's no one above us. I have my cafe, a desk over there, couch where I can, I'm never going to watch the television here. Oh, and over here we've got the the boudoir and a balcony. <laughs> Let's have a look outside. Yeah, it's clearing up. Very, very nice. Milano. I haven't been here since I was, I think, a child, so long overdue. Anyway, let's go back inside. I can sip martinis in the bathtub and look at the tree. I've got another tree over here. So far, absolutely stunning. There's a beautiful courtyard. I'll show you guys later. So we haven't got much time here in Milan, but I'll do a quick wristwatch here. Wearing the Squale 1521, obviously, because of the Milanese connection. Uh, I mean, yeah, it is a Swiss brand, but everyone is Italian at Squale, so I had to represent, there you go. And uh, the collar web strap is actually matching my chuck of boots. Anyway, it is beautiful, stunning. Too many people though, too many people.
So as you can see behind me is Teatro alla Scala, the world famous opera house. It's kind of a lot smaller than I expected. I apologize about the, uh, the sounds of Motorini and all of that. One day I will come here, it's been my dream. You, know, you guys know I'm a big Puccini, Verdi, Wagner fan, so it explains why the tickets are so hard to get, I think, because it's, it's pretty small. Life often has poetic twists of fate and a tendency to always go full circle. Visiting the store, or site I should say, where I first purchased my engagement ring for the love of my life, in the city where we first met over 20 years ago, along with returning with a watch on my wrist from the very brand founded there, feels, well, quite honestly, like it was destined to be. I've fallen in love with Panerai like I fell in love with Squale, Seiko, Rolex, and so many other brands. I've said before that I do not believe in coincidences. One of my heroes, Marcus Aurelius, once wrote, Accept the things which fate binds you, and love the people with whom fate brings you together. But do so with all your heart. Okay, so the sun has just risen. Forgive the chiaroscuro, Caravaggio uh, <laughs> effect here, but the Pepsi's back on the wrist. That means I'm about to catch a plane. Been up since three, so I'm a little bit tired. Forgive the appearance. I will be back. We'll do it even bigger and better next time. So much to do and see here, especially watch related. So yeah, I will see you all back in Philadelphia. Onwards and upwards, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like this video, especially if you want to see more free and independent content like this. Thank you for watching.